let us see our junior staff as only people who can only do the day-to-day -day activities only. They have the brains. And it's up to us as leaders to help them to develop these capacities so that we can sit back and observe them deliver the same service. Competition is key. Yes. Now, so whereas, whereas you're looking at the competition, one other thing you also must, must also look at keenly is your competitive advantage. What is it that we have that others don't have? That we can strengthen and then, you know, lengthen the gap. Because your competitive advantage can make you go faster ahead of your competitors. So that's also key. But what I wanted you to know is to understand that whether you like it or not, you are operating in an industry where there is competition. You may be the industry leaders today. The thing is, are we going to harness us, continuously be the leaders of the industry, or we are going to get complacent? And in a, straight, in a stiff competition, complacency is not a good thing. Yeah? So that's the first thing I want us, I want us to look at. I want you to look at this, this statement. What do you think about it? This is talking to us as leaders. In other words, all the junior staff, the junior team members you have, please don't only focus on what they are doing on a day-to-day -day basis only, but engage them, challenge them. They have the brains. Make them, give them the opportunity to be more creative. Sometimes you can even shadow them. Get them. You know, when Monica started calling me, I thought, you know, she's now been moved to HR. And, of course, I knew her to be in there. But believe you me, she's doing fantastically well. You get a point? Please, not... Don't let us see our junior staff as only people who can only do the day-to-day -day activities only. They have the brains. And it's up to us as leaders to help them to develop these capacities so that we can sit back and observe them deliver the same service. Are you with me? I did something for Islamic Development Bank recently in, the, in December, and I told them, please bring the number twos of each of the managers. And it worked perfectly. Why? Because sometimes even they're sitting at management meeting without even contributing, but observing the way management meetings are done. It's in itself growth. Of course, there's some information they cannot be privy to in the management meeting, but knowing how the meeting is even, how it is conducted and stuff like that, is part of growth. So please, let's not use only their hands. Why? Look at this graph. This is what we call the ignorance iceberg. Those of us in this room, we are only exposed to 4% of the problems of our customers. I hope you know that. Now, the team managers, we, know, we only know 9%. This is scientifically done. It was done by Sydney in 1989. Now, the people who actually have the problems by itself are the staff who interface with the customers. I wrote a book on customer service, and in the book, I highlighted something that I talked about like this in my book on customer service. Now, in most organizations where the channel of communication is like this, you cannot survive in the change dynamics. Because here, whatever the directors say, the managers say is final. The staff, the customer facing staff, has, they don't have anything to say. They can't add to it. This is to implement what is being told. Now, when you do this, you are talking about management-driven hierarchy with little or no input from team members. But that means we're only using their hands and not their brains. So what must we do? Every leader here must go back and then, you know, invent, this is what I call the analog era, where you have experience, okay, and knowledge, but not imagination. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, some people have said knowledge is, it's not true. Knowledge is not power, it is accurate and relevant knowledge. That makes you powerful. There are certain things that we don't know. I mean, when, when my son is, you know, fidgeting with his phone and I'm looking at him and I'm, and, you know, I'm asking myself, where was I when all these things were being done? But I can't go back to history. I can't go back to be 30, 29 and I have to now learn how to, you know, hook up with him for him to teach me. But that means I must be humble enough to be taught. And that's something that we as managers sometimes we have a challenge for. So this is what we must do. We must turn it around and go back to this. Okay? So that the customer facing staff, these people uh, who face the customers, we can empower them. Okay? And then make the communication channel both ways. 
So we, we must sharpen our listening skills and hear them when they are talking. When they are making content. Sometimes let's even ask questions that will elicit responses from them. Where people begin to own the process themselves. I was telling uh, my colleague here that whenever I come here and I look at GM, GM works as if he owns the hotel. How many of you have observed that? He's almost everywhere. He's meeting the customers. It only takes people who have enterprise leadership to do that. And, and then you, when you do that, where everyone remains, I mean, reimagines growth and how to realize it. So people don't wait for them to how to achieve something. It now becomes part and parcel of the culture. So they own the process and everything get, gets done. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So please don't forget this graph here. I want you to never to forget it. This one here. Okay? This is key. This is key. Alright? So 96% of the problems are hidden from senior management. And that's a f that's a fact. So what we need to do is learn how to engage the junior staff, okay? The junior team members so that we can tap into their creativity. If we don't do that, we're going to have we're going to miss out on a lot of solutions. The, the statement says, for 25 years or so, you've only used my hands. Now it's about time you tap into my brains. And it's part of the change management process that we are talking about. What is the role of leadership here? The role of leadership is to think about how to influence the, how to influence the by addressing these concerns so that eventually the yellow mark this yellow mark here would now cover the entire place to make it yellow. In other words, how do we spread our influence as leaders? And that can only be done when we build cultures that enables us to know the people we are working with. Are, are we together? Now, you cannot know people unless you are willing to listen to them. So if you look at it, the concerns are larger. How many of us in this room? The management team in Sheraton Hotel, probably about 30 people or even maybe less. But how many staff do we have? They are more than us. Some of you are saying you have 96 people working under you. Some are saying 19, some are saying 9 and stuff. So you are, you are just a small person. I mean, you are, the management is a small team of people. But a larger group, they have concerns. The role of the leader is to spread your leadership capacities to cover, to address the concerns that they have. And when you do that, ladies and gentlemen, then we can talk about the skills that are needed. And then, so my next level, we are going to talk about what skills and mindsets that are needed to capacities or the capabilities in developing actionable results. That's where I'm moving to now. So we are moving from here, that because we have a lot of concerns, how do we use the influence to be able to address this? To do that, you need certain skills. And that's what I want to address now.